Hi, and welcome to this digital session on the future of workload consolidation. Today we're going to talk about Flash Array file services. I'm Alan Driscoll with the Flash Array product management team, and I'm joined by James Gallegos with the Flash Array product marketing team. James, why don't you get us started? Hey, Alan, thanks a lot. Um, and thanks everybody for joining us today. We're very excited to, to go through some awesome new technology as, as part of the, the Purity 6.0 launch. So just to get started, let's, let's talk a little bit about the history of um, our interfaces and protocol support on the Flash Array. Back in 2012, when we first introduced the Flash Array to the market, we came to market with enterprise grade and enterprise level iSCSI and Fiber Channel. Uh, back in those days, Fiber Channel was at the 8 gigabit speed, and iSCSI had, you know, was encroaching on the Ethernet speeds of 10 gigabit at those times. Today, those markets continue. Those industries continue to, to evolve with Fiber Channel coming up on 64 gigabit and iSCSI and Ethernet being able to go into the 50 to 100 gigabit speeds. So that's, uh, you know, our block support continues to thrive and everything's going very well. Um, but back in 2018, we introduced NVMe over Fabrics um, with Rocky. And uh, we made that choice um, uh, for Rocky um, being over uh, Ethernet. And so you're able, the customers are able to leverage NVMe protocol um, over the fabrics with existing Ethernet infrastructure. So in 2017, when we introduced our first end-to-end -end all NVMe array, you know, 2018, we're completing that journey with now offering not only front-end NVMe or fabrics functionality, but also back-end being able to connect direct flash shelves um, to our flash arrays. So getting rid of SAS altogether from the stack. And we called that technology for NVMe over Fabrics direct flash fabric. So that brings us to today. We, you know, what, what's next for us? And a lot of the decisions we make at Pure, uh, in fact, most of them, are, are due very much in um, by our, our customer feedback that we get. And one thing that we are continually asked um, in the past is, you know, uh, from customers, is we want to put more on Pure. You know, we, we, we love having our tier one workloads um, our block workloads, our hypervisors, our VVOLs. We love having those workloads on the flash array, you know, but we want more. We want to be able to utilize um, the flash array for also our file workloads. And so we're happy today to announce that um, with Purity 6.0, um, customers can enjoy the, uh, the benefits of having SMB and NFS um, on their flash arrays. And so let's talk a little bit about how that came um, to fruition. So if you recall, um, uh, about a year, about 18 months ago now, um, we acquired a technology from a company called um, CompuVerd. Uh, CompuVerd, um, we're, we're very, very proud of the technology because it's, it's a very mature, um, very stable, um, very feature-rich um, NAS technology. And so, um, you know, you might be asking yourself, you know, what, uh, or asking, you know, asking out loud or in the chat right now, you know, what, what, ha what took so long? You know, it was 18 months ago. You know, why did it take so long for, for Pure to integrate this new technology? And just to kind of level set, you know, when when uh, when an organization makes an acquisition, um, especially of, of software technology, you essentially have two primary ways of integrating that technology. Uh, the first of which is what most companies end up doing, and that's that you end up adding it as an additional layer um, to an existing code base. And for us, that would have uh, that would have allowed us to come to market a lot faster. But what we uh, were able to see is that that also comes with some complexity. And Pure's effortless methodology is we we want this to be as uh, as simple as a, you know Pure customers are used to for everything. And simplicity also equals stability, and there and there's a lot of ad additional benefits with that. So we opted to not add this as an, as an additional gateway or as an additional layer. Um, instead, we decided to build it in natively. So if you take a look at the CompuVerge stack, it included SMB and NFS protocols, a file system, and a storage layer. The storage layer served as a natural cut line since the deeper layers of purity are where so much of what purity does, you know, or, or as you can say, that's, you know, so much of that is where the magic happens for us. And so we took the file protocols and the file system and we laid them alongside our block protocols on top of our data reduction and our highly available flash storage, um, providing a natively integrated functionality. And so what we're able to get now is multi true multi-protocol access, leveraging native full-featured protocols across the board. 
So customers with can now leverage existing fiber channel, iSCSI, NVMe over fabrics, VVOLs, and even now SMB and NFS capability all on one system, but really being able to benefit with, you know, massive amounts of consolidation potential. Um, the system also is going to provide, you know, very enterprise level, um, you know, directory level snapshots and um, monitoring and metrics um, at that same level. And because we're integrating everything in natively, we're now going to be able to see the benefits of global data reduction uh, across not only block workloads, but now also across file. So that means that our, our data reduction isn't going to just data reduce file amongst itself and block amongst itself. It's going to reduce everything together. So customers are going to now see variable block data reduction across file, block, and all workloads on the array across all volumes, across all LUNs. And so there's no need to worry about the additional headache of where am I putting everything? How am I going to get the best data reduction possible? We take care of all of that for you. And then lastly, because of this, we're also getting this sh the same shared pool of storage across all file workloads and block workloads. So there's no need to to worry about any abandoned abandoned capacity. For example, if you know for for added uh, gateway or layer of technologies, you know when you when you're provisioning physical LUNs out to NAS or or vice versa in many cases, you know a lot of times you're you're not going to use all the capacity. So you end up having a lot of capacity that you, that is you're unable to fun to use even though it's not being used for one side or the other. In this case, you can get the best um, availability and the best efficiency out of the out of the system possible. And with that, I want to hand it over to Alan to dig a little bit deeper on the uh, data reduction side. Um, Alan? Thanks, James. So incoming data is compressed and written out to flash storage with enough parity to reconstruct it, even if two drives fail. If the same data is written elsewhere, this simply becomes a second mapping to the same storage. We've also integrated file services into the existing GUI, command line interface, and REST API. New concepts like managed directories and export policies take their place alongside familiar ones, building on what you already know and giving you the simplicity that you've come to expect from pure storage. I've taken to saying you already know how to use it. And what I mean by that is, it's not going to be like getting into the driver's seat and wondering where the gear shift is and how to raise the seat or adjust the mirrors. This is just the new model of the car you've been driving for years. Most things are where you expect them to be. And, and the new things fit in naturally. So if you're wondering, how much space am I using for files? Do what you always did in the GUI. Go, go to the dashboard and you'll see the familiar space reporting. But now there's a new color representing file space alongside volumes, snapshots, system space. Maybe you're wondering what the file workload looks like. Well, go over to analysis and hit the performance tab just like always. And you'll see the familiar concepts of latency, throughput, average block size, but you'll notice a new line for metadata alongside writes and reads. We have metadata operations for blocks as well, but especially for files, it, there are certain workloads where it becomes important to be able to see those metadata operations to understand a workload. But still, everything is where you would have expected to find it, and the learning curve is very gentle. Let's get more deeply into managed directories. So the root of every file system is a managed directory. You can create additional managed directories immediately below it. Purity 6.0 supports up to 500 managed directories per array. To a NAS client, these look like any ordinary directory, with the single exception that an as client can't remove a managed directory, because this is a directory that's important to the storage admin for some reason. It was created by the storage admin. 
What's different is that where the storage admin can't see ordinary directories, they can see these managed directories in the GUI, in the command line interface, and in the REST API. They can monitor performance and space, and they can apply policies to managed directories. So these would include export policies, snapshot schedules and retention policies, and coming later this year, quotas. An ordinary directory can't be converted into a managed directory, so it is important to plan ahead. Think about where you'll want to apply policies or where you want to monitor performance or space and create a skeleton before you begin to uh, migrate or, or create data. So let me walk through a couple of examples of what this might look like. In the simplest example, there's just one managed directory, which is the, the root managed directory you always get with every file system. That's what will be exported. That's where snapshots are taken. That's where you can monitor performance in space. In this example, the storage admin has created ordinary subdirectories for each of the, the users to have as their home directory. Looking at a fancier example, here the storage admin has decided to create managed directories for each of the users. The, the root directory still offers rolled up performance and space reporting for the entire file system. If you wanted to take snapshots at that level, you could. And this might also be exported uh, perhaps with different export policies. Maybe this is a, a backdoor only for storage admins so they can see the entire file system, whereas the individual users will, will mount their home directory exports. The storage admin could also choose to have snapshot policies at the level of the home directories. Perhaps there are different schedules or different retention policies for different users. And the storage admin can monitor performance and space at this level to be able to answer questions like, what sort of throughput is Jonathan getting? Um, how much physical space is Naveen taking up? Is Alan still getting the same data reduction that he was before he uploaded all of those cat videos? Going on to a third example, the storage admin could create managed directories uh, for different purposes. So maybe here we have one for departmental shares, one for projects, one for users. And so the, the individual users get directories one more level down. And here we would be relying on the directory and file permissions inside the file system to control who can do what. So for example, Naveen might open his home directory up read only everyone because that makes collaboration easier. Uh, meanwhile, Alan hides all those cat videos from his coworkers. The storage admin can see performance and space collectively for all of the users. Uh, although not individually for each user, as well as seeing uh, performance and space for projects or for departmental shares and being able to have separate snapshots maybe on different schedules and with different retention policies for those. As I mentioned before, we can have hundreds of managed directories and now a level down uh, where we put the home directories, there could literally be hundreds of millions of these. Back over to you, James. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Alan. And thanks, everybody, again, for joining us today. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with everybody. Um, we are going to be available um, on this awesome Digital Accelerate experience um, via um, a live uh, live chat, live, live Q&A. So um, we'll be excited to talk to everybody. Um, also, um, please uh, take a look over at our, uh, our demo booth because we are going to be providing uh, demos for the new the new functionalities in uh, available in purity 6.0 including what we went over today with file uh, thanks again and i uh, hope i see everybody soon